In this topic, we're going to discuss anaerobic respiration. So we're going to look at what is anaerobic respiration and how it happens in muscle cells, something called the oxygen debt, yeast and how yeast is used to make wine and bread, and then the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So what is anaerobic respiration? Well, I'm sure you've heard of the term lactic acid. This is produced when you sprint or exercise vigorously and your muscles need to respire anaerobically because they don't have enough oxygen. What about alcohol? How is this made? This also uses anaerobic respiration where yeast respires anaerobically to produce ethanol. Anaerobic respiration is also used in bread making. So what is the definition? It's the release of a relatively small amount of energy by the breakdown of food substances in the absence of oxygen. So key words to remember is small amount of energy and absence of oxygen. Now when you exercise, have you ever stopped and wondered what is actually happening in your muscles? Your muscles need oxygen and glucose to respire aerobically. But during vigorous exercise, your heart and lungs cannot get enough oxygen to your muscles quickly enough. So your muscles start to respire without oxygen. So they undergo anaerobic respiration. So during exercise, your muscle cells need more energy, and this energy is made in respiration. This usually uses oxygen, but sometimes there's not enough oxygen to meet the increased demand. So when this happens, the muscles can respire without oxygen for a short time. So we call this anaerobic respiration. Now the word equation is glucose is converted into lactic acid and energy. And if you're doing extended, you need to know the equation and symbol. So it's C6H12O6 forms 2C3H6O3 and energy. Lactic acid is poisonous. So it must be removed from the muscles and it's going to be taken to the liver and broken down using oxygen. So if you're doing extended, you need to know about the oxygen debt. So when you've run sprints in school, you'll find that you're out of breath and need to breathe deeply and quickly, even after you've finished the race. This is so that the extra oxygen can convert the lactic acid into harmless compounds. So after strenuous exercise, a person will continue to be, breathe faster and deeper. So this is to provide oxygen to convert the lactic acid to harmless compounds. And the extra oxygen is called the oxygen debt. Oxygen debt builds up after we exercise vigorously. And it has to be paid back straight away. Now sprinters build up lactic acid in their muscles. And they often hold their breath during a 100 meter race. So afterwards, they need about 7 cubic decimeters, which is about 7 liters of oxygen, to get rid of the lactic acid. So they breathe deeply after the race in order to repay the oxygen debt. And their heart rate remains high after the race to deliver lots of blood to the muscles to remove the lactic acid that the muscles made. Now, yeast also respires anaerobically. So yeast and plants can respire anaerobically, but instead of lactic acid being produced, they produce ethanol, which is an alcohol. So the equation for yeast and plants is the same. Glucose is converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide and energy. And if you're doing extended, you need to know the equation and symbols. So it's C6H12O6 is converted into C2H5OH, so there's two of those, plus two CO2. So notice how there are two products being formed. You've got carbon dioxide and ethanol. So what is yeast? Well, it's a unicellular fungus. And you can buy dry yeast or yeast in a dry powder form, and then activate it by adding water and sugar. So yeast can respire anaerobically. This requires glucose, and it makes carbon dioxide and ethanol, which is the alcohol. 
So how is yeast used in brewing? Well, in beer production, barley grains are the source of the sugar. And in a process called malting, these grains are allowed to germinate for a few days. So during this time, the enzymes break down the starch in the grains into sugars called maltose. This sugar can be dissolved in water to give a brown liquid. Next, in a process called mashing, yeast is added to the brown liquid and then fermentation begins. So to give the beer its characteristic bitter flavour, flowers of a plant are added, for example, hops. Now most beer is brewed on an industrial scale in large copper vats, as you can see in this picture here. It can also be brewed using computer technology to carefully monitor and adjust the conditions in the vats. Yeast is also used to make wine. So how is it used to make wine? Well, the grapes are carefully cultivated and the type of grape will determine the type of wine eventually produced. So when the grapes are ripe, they're going to be picked. The grapes are then crushed, and this can be done by people treading on them, but nowadays it's done by machines, although some people do believe that the flavors are lost without the feet involved. Yeast and other microorganisms are then going to be added, and these will feed on the sugars in the grapes and produce the alcohol. So grapes and yeast are left in large vats made of wood or stainless steel, and this takes a long time. They are monitored and left for months. Finally, when the wine is ready, it's going to be bottled and sold. Now, some wine is only sold a few years after bottling. So making wine takes a long time and it's very specialized, so don't try it at home. You can use the same principles to make something called ginger beer, which Americans call root beer. So you can try this recipe at home, but do ask for permission first. So don't worry, it doesn't make enough alcohol to count. That would take months, by which time the bottles would have exploded. So you need 300 grams of white sugar, 60 grams of crushed dry ginger, skin and juice of half a lemon, 2 liters of water and 6 grams of dry yeast. So what you do is you mix the sugar, ginger and the skin and the juice of the lemon in a bowl. Then you boil the water and pour it over the mixture into the bowl. So you stir it until the sugar is dissolved. Let the mixture cool until lukewarm. Dissolve the yeast in a little warm water and then add it to this mixture and stir thoroughly. Cover the bowl tightly and let it stand covered in a cool area for about 12 hours until the mixture contains small bubbles. Then you pour the mixture through a soft cloth or sieve into a storage bottles. Since there will still be a little yeast action going on, use containers that can withstand a little pressure and then you store it in the refrigerator and serve chilled. So remember that because respiration is still taking place, carbon dioxide is going to be formed and this will build up pressure in the container, so be very careful. Now in class, we're going to do an experiment to show carbon dioxide has evolved during anaerobic respiration of yeast. So to activate the yeast, it must be mixed with sugar and water. And the water used is boiled to remove any dissolved gases. Now, any other organisms are killed, which is also useful so they do not affect the results. This yeast solution <coughs> excuse me, is then used in the following apparatus, as you can see here. Why do you think you add oil on top of the solution? Well, this is to prevent air mixing with the solution so that anaerobic respiration takes place. And you put the apparatus into a water bath, a temperature controlled water bath or what we call a thermostatically controlled water bath so that the temperature remains the same. Then you'll notice bubbles of gas forming. To test these bubbles of gas for carbon dioxide we use lime water which should turn milky white or cloudy white. Okay we've discussed how yeast was made in making wine how is it used to make bread? 
Well, this relies on the production of carbon dioxide when yeast respires. So yeast is mixed with flour and water. Now, bread flour has got a protein called gluten. So when the carbon dioxide is released from the yeast respiring, it's going to be trapped in the gluten. And this causes the bread to rise. So the bubbles in the bread that you see are actually from the carbon dioxide. So once risen, the dough is baked in loaf tins and the small amount of alcohol that is made will be evaporated during baking. Okay, lastly, you need to write down the differences between aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration uses oxygen to make energy whereas anaerobic respiration doesn't use oxygen. Remember that aerobic respiration makes a lot of energy, whilst anaerobic respiration only makes a little bit of energy. The products of aerobic respiration are carbon dioxide and water, whereas in anaerobic respiration there are ethanol and carbon dioxide in plants and yeast, and then lactic acid in mussels. And finally, both use glucose to make energy. Right, in summary, we looked at aerobic respiration in the last topic and then anaerobic respiration in muscles and plants. So you need to know these equations. And if you're doing extended, you need to know the equation and symbols. So in this topic, we looked at anaerobic respiration, the definition. What happens in muscle cells when muscle cells respire anaerobically? Remember that they produce lactic acid. For oxygen debt, yeast and how yeast is used to make wine and bread. And then the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. And that concludes our lesson. The end.